Hello my YouTube friends and welcome back to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Polk Reserve R200 bookshelf speaker. I ran across this speaker at my local dealer. I was really impressed with how it sounded so I bought a pair. And today we're going to tear this thing down and find out how this thing ticks. So today we're going to go over the TS parameters of the drivers, what technologies are being used in those drivers, and then we're going to go over the cabinet construction, find out how well it's made, and then we're going to finish this off by taking a look at the crossover. So let's get started. When this video was made, the Polk Reserve R200 bookshelf speaker had an MSRP of $799 and was available in walnut, white, or black finishes. The speakers I have are finished in walnut, and it's one of the best walnut wraps I have seen from this price range. It really does look like real wood veneer until you closely examine the cabinet. The cabinet measures 7.5 inches in width, by 14 inches in height, by 12.75 inches in depth. The speaker uses a base reflex cabinet design and features Polk's patented export technology, which I'll talk more about later. The drivers include a 6.5 inch base driver and a 1 inch pinnacle ring radiator tweeter, both of which are taken from their flagship Legend Series speaker line. For termination, Polk includes a pair of binding posts to connect the speakers to your amplifier or AVR, so no bi-wiring is available. Now that I got most of the specifications out of the way, let's get started with the teardown. So I'm ready to start tearing down these Polk Reserve R200s. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this base driver. It has a plastic trim ring around it and I think it's held in by rubber grommets. We're about ready to find out, but I'm pretty sure it is. Now I'm using a very highly specialized tool from my wife's kitchen to get this trim ring removed. So I got the trim ring removed and it is held in by rubber grommets. And once you have that removed, it reveals the four Phillips head screws. Surprised they're only using four screws to hold in the driver to the front baffle. All right, I am kind of excited to remove this driver because it is from their Legend series. I am a little disappointed though. It doesn't look like it has a cast basket. This looks like a stamp steel frame. So let's go ahead and get this thing removed and see what it looks like. The base driver is 6.5 inches in size and uses Polk's proprietary turbine cone technology. The cone is injected, molded, and sandwiches air inside a rigid foam structure. This design makes the cone thicker and stiffer without adding additional weight. The cone's fin-like ridges, which are in a vortex pattern, add additional stiffness without adding additional mass. Polk claims this cone design pushes residences out of band, resulting in cleaner and more detailed sound. The basket is made from stamped steel and the driver features a rubber surround. In addition to the turbine cone technology, this driver incorporates advanced technologies not typically found at this price point. For example, the base driver's suspension uses two spiders that operate in a push-pull configuration, which Polk claims enhances control over the voice coil and delivers more accurate sound. Another cool innovation is the use of shorting rings in the base driver. Shorting rings are highly effective at minimizing harmonic and intermodulation distortion, providing better clarity and sound quality. This is the first speaker I've reviewed for under a thousand bucks that utilize shorting rings in their woofer design. Normally I see this tech in more expensive speakers. Polk is using a couple of design techniques to keep the voice coil cool during those loud listening sessions. The first one is by using a vented pole piece, which will cool the voice coil indirectly. The second is by venting the voice coil underneath the spider. To handle the trapped air behind the dust cap, Polk is using a vented bobbin and a vented pole piece. 
The raised circular section on the back of the motor assembly is called a bump plate, and it aids in providing more excursion for the voice coil so it doesn't bottom out. The terminals on the back of the driver are made from non-ferrous materials, which is nice to see. Now let's see how much this driver weighs. Now let's see how much the base driver weighs. And it came in at 3 pounds and 7.5 ounces. For comparison, the woofer from my ELAC DBR62 came in at 4 pounds and 15 ounces. For the most part, the impedance curve is pretty smooth. There is one resonance taking place at around 750 hertz that I think might have enough amplitude where it might be audible. The resonant frequency of the bass driver measured at 53 hertz and total Q is 0.46, indicating a well damped driver. Voice coil inductance measured really low at 0.25 millihenries, thanks to the use of shorting rings that Polk includes into their design. BL, which measures the strength of the motor assembly, measured at 6.5 tesla meters, which is pretty average for this price point. In my opinion, the driver measured pretty well and includes some cool tech that is normally found in more expensive speakers. The tolerances between bass drivers are the best I have seen yet from a speaker that sells for under $1,000 a pair. The difference in FS came in at 0.76%, and the difference in ZMAX measured at 3%. That's incredible. It appears Polk has some very tight manufacturing tolerances for these drivers, which is great to see. Nice job, Polk. So now I'm going to remove the ring radiator tweeter. This is what Polk refers to as the pinnacle tweeter. And there was this cover piece on it. I thought I was filming when I was removing this, but apparently I wasn't. So basically it's kind of the same thing as um, the trim ring for the base driver. Just use something in between to pop it out and it comes right off. Uh, they are using magnets to hold it on, which I think is pretty slick. And uh, the tweeter is held in by three Phillips head screws. The R200's high frequencies are handled by a 1 inch pinnacle tweeter. This is a ring radiator designed from Polk. The point in the center of the tweeter is a waveguide that is designed to enhance dispersion of high frequency sound waves. Unlike traditional dome tweeters, the pinnacle uses two large soft ring suspension pieces as the acoustic radiating surfaces, the inner ring and the outer ring. The benefit of this design is breakup modes are less of a problem because there is no central dome. This tweeter also features a well damped sealed chamber to reduce resonances from backwave radiation. To reduce inductance and flux, Polk is using a copper cap on the tweeter which will improve clarity and reduce distortion. Also, the speaker terminals on the back of the tweeter are made from non-ferrous materials, which is nice to see. The impedance curve for the tweeter is smooth. There is a very small resonance taking place between 725Hz and 1kHz and then another larger resonance around 2.25 kilohertz. None of these resonances will be an issue because Polk has crossed the tweeter over at 3 kilohertz. This is well beyond the point at which these resonances occur. The resonant frequency of the tweeter is low at 422 hertz and DC resistance measured at 3 ohms. Voice coil inductance is really low at 0.012 millihenries and I'm guessing the copper cap has something to do with that just like the shorting rings in the bass driver. Keep in mind that higher inductance voice coils are not favorable because they reduce high frequency output, slower transient response, and increased distortion due to a phenomenon called inductance modulation. Just like the bass drivers, the tolerances between the tweeters are the best I have measured yet from this price category. The difference in FS is well below 1% and the difference in ZMAX is 3.4%. The manufacturing process that Polk is using to build their drivers is impressive. Nice job, Polk. The component quality in the crossover is typical for this price range. The tweeter circuit uses a single air core inductor and a combination of polypropylene and polyester film capacitors. For the woofer circuit, I believe Polk is using all iron core inductors and electrolytic capacitors. The component quality is nothing to write home about, but is in line with other speakers I have torn down from this price point. Polk did make a modified version of the R200 called the Anniversary Edition. The Anniversary Edition includes high quality crossover components and a real wood veneer cabinet. 
The anniversary edition had a suggested retail price of $12.99, but I have seen some dealers in the States sell them for only $50 more than the standard R200, which is an incredible value. I'll leave a link to the discounted R200 anniversary edition in the description. In my opinion, the Polk Reserve R200 and Monitor Audio Bronze 100 offer some of the best fit and finish I have seen among speakers priced under $1,000 per pair. Their vinyl wood grain finish is among the nicest I have seen, and in my opinion, the cabinet's construction quality is well above average for this $800 price point. The enclosure contains ample high quality sound damping material to absorb sound waves radiating from the back of the woofer. Additionally, a center brace connects all of the side walls together, enhancing structural integrity and reducing any cabinet resonances. The front baffle measures 7 eighths of an inch thick, and the side and rear cabinet walls are 3 quarters of an inch thick. Polk also rounded the front baffle edges, reducing sound wave diffraction and baffle step for a smoother, more predictable frequency response. Few speaker manufacturers include such details at this price point. Polk also optimized material use during manufacturing. For instance, when cutting the woofer hole, they repurposed that leftover piece, gluing it on the top of the enclosure wall to provide additional strength and reduce cabinet resonances. Overall, I really like this cabinet considering the budget constraints they had to work within. Port tuning for the Polk Reserve R200 measured just above 50 Hz. I did see one cabinet resonance show up around 300 Hz that is circled in red. The resonances that are circled in green are from the bass driver. The reason I know this is because they match up with the resonances I found from when I measured the impedance curve. This is by far the most complex design bass reflex port I have encountered yet on a speaker. Ports on speakers are designed to allow air to escape from the cabinet, which aids in providing greater bass output. The problem with simple port designs is that they can create noises, such as chuffing sounds, that mask the mid-range and reduce bass output. Polk's X-Port is engineered to allow air to exit the cabinet as smoothly and quietly as possible. Polk went a step further by incorporating eigentone filters, which are tubes placed in the center of the port. These filters work by using advanced acoustic analysis to identify the specific frequencies at which cabinet resonances occur in the R200. The engineers then tune the eigentone filters to match those resonant frequencies, but do so out of phase with the cabinet's resonance, effectively canceling them out. This is pretty cool stuff and is similar to the concept used in noise canceling headphones. During my listening sessions, I couldn't hear any port noises, so whatever they are doing, it seems to be working. So now we're going to take a look at the binding post and terminal cup. It is held in by three Allen screws. And I want to see if there's any fierce materials being used. So I've got this magnet here and it's not attaching to any of those parts which tell me there's no ferrous materials there. And these are the terminals that connect the uh, binding post to the crossover and they appear to be made of steel and these are the nuts that fasten the binding post to the terminal cup and those are also made from steel. So there is some ferrous materials being used. Um, you can change that out if you want, but I know a lot of you guys like to know about that information, so I always include it in the videos. I'm gonna be comparing the R200s to my modified Kef Q350s, since both speakers are in the same price category. If you're not familiar with the modifications I've performed to my Kef speakers, I'll leave a link to that video in the description. When comparing the R200s to my modified Kef Q350s, there are some similarities between the two speakers, but there are also several differences. In my opinion, both the R200s and the Q350s are on the warm side of neutral, but where they differ is in bass output and clarity. During my music listening sessions, I could tell my Kefs had more bass and went lower than the R200s. This was especially obvious when listening to some of my favorite hip-hop tracks. The R200s do have decent bass that I think most listeners will be happy with, but in my opinion, they seem to run out of steam on notes below 50 Hz. The R200s are a bit sensitive to placement, so if you have a pair, make sure you take the time to dial them in for your environment and they will reward you. 
Polk recommends towing in the speakers towards the listener, and I found that worked quite well for me. After listening to several music CDs and movies, I felt the R200s had the upper hand in imaging and soundstage when compared to my Kef Q350s. The tweeter in the R200s is very nice and provides an impressive three-dimensional listening experience that I felt was even better than my ELAC UBR62s. The tweeter has a really nice airy presence about it that engulfs the listener in crystal clear sound. This brings me to my next topic, which is clarity. This is where I think the R200s really shine over my Kef Q350s. In my opinion, Polk has installed some really nice drivers in the R200s. These drivers contain demodulation rings, also known as shorting rings, and the benefit of them is they significantly reduce harmonic and intermodulation distortion, giving the speaker much better clarity and sound quality. If you're a member of my channel, then make sure to click on my members only sound demo. This is where I try to illustrate some of the differences between these two speakers. Both member tiers will have access to my sound demo comparison videos. Overall, I'm really impressed by what the R200 has to offer, and it's my new favorite bookshelf speaker that can be purchased for under $800 per pair. In my opinion, the speaker includes some really nice drivers, a rigid cabinet, and impressive sound quality for this price point. If you have $800 to spend on a pair of bookshelf speakers, then you can't go wrong with a pair of Polk Reserve R200s. And that's my look inside video, the Polk Reserve R200. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then make sure to hit that like button. If you have a suggestion for a speaker you would like to see, then please leave a comment down below. So long, and happy listening!